Let's rest in the <laughs> Today we're going to learn how to do the rolling deadlift. Hey man, how you going? Good mate. Thanks. Hello. Good mate. Where is our Mr. Anth Jam? Hello. Come into my office. Just be tired. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we, we need you to oversee. We're starting to get it right this time. <laughs> my overlord. How are you, Rob? bench there. Tails. <laughs> um, Robert, Anth's going to teach the internet how to roll deadlifts. Do you want to help? Yeah. That's <laughs> no, a trade secret. Just sitting there. Well, that that Still proposal kicking around a bandit. <laughs> Alright, Mr. Anth, what are we doing today? Recording? Nah, the one, that, the one there is not going to record, because otherwise I get two audio files and it's a fucking hassle. So, today we're going to learn how to do the rolling deadlift. King of all deadlifts, conventional of course, because I'm not going to cheat like a sumo. <laughs> exactly. Uh, rolling conventional deadlifts. Um, so you do it. been doing it for about three years, pretty much since I started powerlifting. Um, found it works best for me, has multiple pros, probably no cons either. <laughs> um, so you roll deadlifts, I know a lot of other people do, like Benedict Magnuson does, uh, when he did the 1,000 pounds, Eddie Hall rolled his deadlifts for the 500 kilo. Uh, there's a few, but there's not many. Why do you feel like it works for you? Because I'm a super heavyweight at heart. Because a lot of people think that by rolling the bar, it has momentum, so then the bar's rolling and it will come up. General laws of physics, no. Nah. So, so, so see, uh, if something that's already broken inertia, well, that fucked that up, didn't I? That's in a, it's in a different plane, so that doesn't make sense. That, like I said, I'm, I'm going to refute it until someone says otherwise. I guess the most important part is that anecdotally it's better. Anecdotally. So you feel yeah. stronger. Like, what would you think is the most weight you could do on a deadlift without a roll? Without a roll, maybe 240, 250. And then what's your best? 290. In training, 290 kilos. So you reckon a rolling gives you about 40 kilos worth of lift off the ground easily but it's a pattern that you're used to it the positioning of it uh muscular engagement the reflex from it the whole heap of things yeah yeah like that's what you're used to now so like if you did anything else it would just feel worse anyway regardless oh, of absolutely it's your thing all right cool well let's go fucking figure out how to do this catch me outside <laughs> right. what do you weigh at the moment you look skinny actually I think I can take his 66 records. Yeah, what do you want now? 69, 70? 75. 75? Are you gonna lift or not? Yeah. That speaker's fucking annoying. So we're gonna go over here. Testing. I'm legitimately out of breath. Power lift alive. <laughs> I'll run it from start to finish. So, first steps keep your feet narrow and your hands outside your legs, so you're not <laughs> cheating. Anything wider is cheating. It's not good, it's like arching on a bench press, you're a cheater. Regular conventional setup, but what you have to look out for, what you need to take in mind, you don't have to come into that hip dominant position right at the start. So generally I like to come up to the bar, set up alternate grip, because again, I'm not a hook grip cheater. I like to lean right over the bar, pull my shoulders back. So basically what you're doing here is like, your shoulders are really far in front of the bar. Yeah, pretty much. And then eventually I will pull back, but first thing, after you initiate the roll, initiate the roll with the shins, push it with the shins, and this gives you the chance to pull back with your lats, to activate your lats, because that's what people forget. They forget to pack the shoulders, and they'll pull like that, instead of coming back like this. So it's almost like proprioceptively, it teaches you to pull your lats back. Okay, so you kind of squat, you kind of drop your shins forward, and that throws the bar forward. Yeah, you're just applying a little bit of force, and letting that roll naturally, and then pulling it back with your lats. So you're activating your lats and you're providing yourself that slight rock back. So starting again, rock forward, pulling your lats back and you sit back just a tad. Forward, back. As opposed to not pulling it back with your lats. As you sit forward, what tends to happen? You'll catch it too far in front of you. Your shins will go over. You won't be that vertical shin movement. If you don't pull your lats forward, you'll tend to pull it like this. You'll tend to pull too far over the bar or too far in front of you. As you come back, pulling your shoulders back will give you that position to then pull through. I've already gaffed. Um, when the bar's rolling into your shins, 
doesn't it like hit your shins? Yes. So yes. Does it hurt? Well, it's like conditioning. At the start it does, but once you've rolled a few thousand to your leg, it doesn't hurt anymore. How, does, how do you know like when to actually start exerting on the bar? Because when I've tried rolling it and the bar's like rolling, I feel like I can't get tight and then when I actually lift, it's just horribly inconsistent. That's why I'm better than you. So essentially you, you, you feel it, you feel once your shoulders are packed down all the way, it's easy to, one part of it is experience. Um, I've pulled plenty of shit rolls in my time, um, but over and over again, you get better and better about what's best where you know when to, to pull it back, when to exert, when to put the maximum output on. But say where I would think about it, as you're pulling your lats back, pulling your lats back, once you get to here, it's like being set up for any normal conventional deadlift. Just proprioceptively, you're aware of your position, you're aware of your, I guess, optimal position, say scapula, scapula sort of bar length and line, and that's when you pull it through. <laughs> but majority of it's just experience, you'll find what works for you, um, but you'll be able to tell just through your own, to your own practice and your own sort of repetition of it, uh, you'll be best at just pulling where it feels comfortable for you. The biggest mistake with uh, people trying to roll. With roll, you need to, sure, you're gaining PAP effects, which fires up your nervous system, it's fantastic, but you must get your leverage right. You must get the bar swung right in, hit your shins. Hitting your shins is a signal, but you lock and bang, you go. If cool. you pull a shade early, the bar's gonna be out there in effect and nothing's gonna happen. And you're gonna look like uh, a new video, basically. It must go in, lock, bang. So you think that, so the effect is PAP? The effect is in your nervous system. Your nervous system is fired up by the act of swinging it out, pulling in, for, especially through the lats, and that nervous system is activated. It's got nothing to do with momentum, obviously, <laughs> because the bar is gonna change direction, therefore it must go through a zero point. It can't be momentum. So when you can coach lifters, Rob, I see some, a lot of your lifters just do a normal deadlift, attempt one and two, and then they roll on the third, why? You save it. it I believe you can desensitize. You can desensitize? You can desensitize. You I thought you were gonna say because you, like, it's got a high risk. As a high, you desensitize. Uh, often, on that point, they do it once, it saves their day in the third deadlift, and they start doing it in training, and the effect seems to wear off. You can overuse oh. it. However, uh, it is a risk, because you must get that leverage dead right. So for sumo, it's no good, because sumo must be absolutely spot on, can't be a millimetre out. And there's some lifters who are very leverage sensitive, got very thin legs, and they rely on being right in like so. If they're a millimetre out, it doesn't work, so there's too much risk for them. So you, you would not recommend rolling a sumo? No, save it for when you need it. Know how to do it, but save it. What about it. equipped? Equipped, it still works with equipped, because equipped, you're relying on a suit, so you've still got an explosive effect. It's still a gain from having your nervous system fired. Well, that's talking to the super heavyweights as well, like Magnuson and whatnot, who can't actually get into the position yeah, regularly. Yeah, it's because they can't yeah. actually grab the bar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how does it change a different weight? It's like if you do most of your training at like 200 or 220. So I, I, when it's heavier, it obviously rolls slower. I won't start rolling until, say, about 70. 60, 70 percent. Um, no reason to roll. Yeah, around there. No reason to roll anything less, because uh, like we were saying before, even even at 120, rolling 120, I'm able to get the position, pull in, and have everything locked and tight, like so, like the whole point of doing the roll in the first place. I can do it without the roll, right? Pretty easily. But once you get higher as well, you've got more force moments. You need to break the floor, almost a lot a lot more aggressively, there's a lot more taxing on the nervous system. So I would say, if you are going to try it, then only work up to it, say, 60, 70%. You might practice, but it's like with if anything. It's too light, what's like if, if it's too light, it's gonna throw your body off. You know, if you can pull the, pull the bar in okay. more forcibly than, you know, if it's got 70 kilos on there, it's not, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be specific to what it we for a one uh, yeah, a max I like, attempt. I feel like when it's not very heavy, it would roll at a different speed and just uh, the timing would be different. And... Absolutely. Um, yeah, so you reckon don't start rolling until... Don't start six... rolling until it's... it's look, arbitrary numbers, but don't start rolling until it's significantly like, or relatively heavy um, to your own strength because it will roll differently. Um, you know, and it, it will be pretty unforgiving when it's lighter. I actually find it harder to roll when it's lighter, but easier when it's heavier. Hello? 
sumo's cheating. This is a 13 mil Inza, single prong. Unless you're a super heavyweight, don't wear a double prong. I've used that. I've used that. I wore a double prong at 66. <laughs> Say if you have a thicker belt like this, uh, some people might find it hard to even get down to the bar if they go into a lot of torso flexion, say they pull with uh, sort of like a largely rounded like sort of or lordotic lumbar. So what the roll does, it allows you to almost set up with a more neutral aspect. I'll show you anyway, but if I were to do it without a roll, as it come down, because I, I naturally pull with more of a lumbar lordosis. As I go to set up, this closing of this area here makes it difficult to get down to the bar. And even getting down to the bar, I've got less room to work here to actually pull my back in and pull my shoulders down, right? And I, even here, I can feel my hips are too high when they should be a lot lower. In terms of setting up for the roll, I'll set myself up a bit further over the bar, keep my spine more neutral. And as I come down, I can grab it down here. And once the roll comes out, it lets me open up this whole area so then I can pull it down into this position. So again, so say if I do one without it, my hips are way too high in that rep. When I go for the roll, and I pull it back into position, it allows you to drop better into that position because you can pack yourself and you're not hindering any of that torso movement because you're trying to get down to a bar that's right perpendicular to your shins as opposed to getting it here and pulling yourself into it. Boop. Okay. Sumo shooting. All right, so we'll do singles at 210 and compare the bar speed between rolling and not rolling. Uh, yeah, let's compare bar speed and positions and shit. And... most cheating. So one common mistake or one thing you really have to look out for, uh, especially when you're rolling or deadlifting at all, is uh, head position. The con common thing that you see is people will often roll or even normally they'll come and they'll flick their head up. It uh, becomes even easier to do or bad habiting when you come down, you roll it in and because you're having a forcible contraction going forward, people tend to throw their head up. Um, I won't go into too much detail about it because it's pretty heavily like uh, theoretically based uh, per se uh, in terms of but it works in terms of, like the nervous system uh, in terms of semicochlear fluid in the ER um, and balance and how that relates to spinal stability but essentially I'll go through it another time but essentially if you are balanced say keeping your head neutral JP talks about it a lot keeping your head neutral allows you to be more balanced therefore your spinal stability is improved or it's more efficient um, flinging your head up can often throw your balance out and if your balance is out then your spinal stability theoretically is decreased. So go through it another time. But my tip, it works in for, it, you know, it's different for everyone. It's all up to personal preference. Is to also keep your head neutral and really focus on when you're pulling your shoulder blades back or when you're packing your shoulders to really hold your head still so you're in a neutral spine the entire time. Sumo sheeting. Oh. I've got to speak into that. I have to speak into here so you can hear me. Big thanks to Ant for coming on to the, uh, on the YouTube channel talking about rolling deadlifts. The YT, the channel. Onto the YT. Um, thanks for sharing your experience. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> if people want to follow you on Instagram, what's your Instagram handle? Anth Jam. Anth Jam. Anth Jam. At Anth Jam. I'll put a link in the description. Ankle um, breaker. Ankle breaker. It, <laughs> everyone remember that video. This clip with that, with that clip. Oh no. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Anth will be happy to help out. Um, and answer your questions regarding rolling deadlifts. Um, and yeah, all could finish. Yeah, as usual. Okay. <laughs>